Hello again Haskellings, we're going to start with a quick retrospective of day 22. Now I wasn't happy with the repetition going on in the turn function here, and for good reason, they're actually almost identical. The only difference between them is how to calculate the winner, so let's factor that out. Fortunately, refactoring is actually very easy in Haskell. Because everything's a value, including the result of an if-then-else statement, We've been able to put all the branching into this winner value, and then we can simply use that for the recursive call. But we're not done with the crabs yet, because day 23 is crab cups. And might I just add best of luck to the crabs, as it's traditional in some cultures to have seafood on Christmas Day. Anyway, let's start as usual by importing our advent of code module and using interact, which will split our input into lines. We only have one line, so let's run head on that and then map digit to int across those characters. Our f function will then get a list of integers. Now, instead of using a list, which would work, I'm going to take the opportunity to show you how data.sequence works. Let's import that, both unqualified and qualified. Let's write a function g to represent a turn in the game. It's going to take in a sequence and return a sequence. We can use pattern matching in sequences, similar to pattern matching in lists, and we use this funny colon less than pipe notation to do that. I'm going to write a g prime function, which will take in the destination cup, and then the three cups that were picked by the crab, and note that the syntax for this sequence doesn't have the colon. Uh, we'll also need the current cup number. To make calculating the destination easier, I'm going to use a zero-based system. So when we decrement zero, we wrap around back to n minus one. Otherwise, we just subtract one from the number. Because I've chosen to use a zero-based system, I'm going to have to subtract one from every number, and then afterwards I'll add one. And now for the g prime function, which takes in our cup number, the destination cup number, the picked cards, and the rest of the cards. If the destination is one of the picked cards, then we try again, decrementing x. Otherwise, we move on to g prime prime with the same parameters. We're going to have to find x in d's, and there's a function called span that will let us do it. Span l is the sequence version of span. It takes a predicate and a sequence and returns us a tuple. We can use it with a not equal to x predicate and then pattern match like this to get back the subsequences to the left and right of x. We return a new sequence according to the rules, whose head is the new current cup. Greater than less than concatenates two sequences, less than pipe prepends a value to a sequence, and pipe greater than appends a value. Let's now apply g to our input to see how it looks. And that's a strange error, but it's because of the typo I made here. That should be x2, not x's. And that looks a lot better. So let's use span here in the same way as before to get the sequence starting from 1, or 0, in our system. We get the subsequences to the left and to the right of the 0 cup, and we're going to piece those together in the other order but we still need to add one to each and convert those to a string. Note that concatmap works just as well on sequences as it does on lists. We can then use our str new type to get rid of those quotes. And finally, we can use apply n to make sure we run g the requisite number of times. So let's see if that's the right answer. And it is. On to part two. And just like day 15, we've been asked to scale up our solution to a bigger number of iterations and a larger data set. I'm certain that our sequence implementation is just not going to be fast enough, so let's remove that and use an int map like day 15. But this time we're going to use a strict int map, which makes sure values are fully evaluated before being inserted into the map. The idea is that when you look up a value in the int map, you're going to get back the next value in the sequence. We're again going to subtract one from every number, but this time we also need to add on the extra numbers that are required by the puzzle. 
Let's call our map x's dash dash and initialize it by indexing every cup to the one following it. Our turn function g will take in a tuple of the current cup number and the map. Let's write the g function now. Once again, I think we'll use a g prime helper function, but let's also use a dec prime function to calculate the destination cup. We can successively look up in the map the next three values. These will be the cups that the crab picks. The cup after those will be the next current cup, so let's get that now as well. To make the dec prime function as efficient as possible, we just use simple comparisons here instead of using a list, a lem function, or something similar. The g prime function now needs to rearrange the cups. We do this by inserting values into our map. We start by removing the three picked cups by pointing the current cup at the next current cup. Then we point the destination cup at the first of the picked cups. Finally, we finish grafting in the picked cups by pointing the third one to where the destination cup used to point. So that looks good, but we need a map to list function to convert that back to a proper list. It's going to take as parameters the value we're going to start at and the map itself. We can successively look up the next value by indexing into the map and traverse the list in that way. We're going to use recursion, so we need to keep track of the original number to know when to stop. We return the next number i prime prepended to the list we get back from the recursive call. So let's use that to process the output from our call to g here. We use second to ignore the current value and get back just the map. Then we can use map to list to get the cycle starting from zero. Finally, we can map plus one to that to get back to a one based system. And that output looks good, so let's use apply n again to iterate over g the right number of times. Then we can compare the results with what we had before, and that looks right. Now part 2 only requires us to calculate the product of the next two values, so let's extract them and multiply them together. And it's finally time to scale up, and we need to scale to a million numbers and 10 million iterations. So let's see how that goes. And it took about a minute to run, and indeed gave us the right answer. But I think we can do better. As I did for day 15, I went and re-implemented this using data vector unboxed mutable. The process is almost identical to that of day 15, converting the int map into a mutable vector. Once again, I've committed to the repository both versions in the same file. So while I have a moment, I'd just like to say that you all rock. From the newest newbie to the most ninja expert, the Haskell community is a constant source of joy and inspiration for me. I've already mentioned many people in this channel, but there are many I haven't mentioned who have helped to inspire these videos, like Ainwood87, I Am From Space, Gilgamech, Geoguy, Orthocrisol, PW Mosquito, Segved and Vader. I'd also like to give a shout out to Tsoding and Jcor, whose videos are simply awesome. And finally, I'd like to wish you all the best for the holiday season. Feliz Navidad. Joyeux Noël. Feliz Natal. Frohe Weihnachten. Merry Christmas. And a happy Haskling to each and every one of you.